Norm Smith, I like things that are a little bit unusual. You see 57 Suburbans around, but not a whole lot of them. And this one is a cut above. This is a beautiful vehicle. I uh, took about nine years to restore this. I've done my best to duplicate all of the correct methods of manufacture that the, uh, the Chevrolet would have used at the time. Uh, so it did take me a long time to do it, a lot of research and uh, a lot of problems that we had to overcome. The choice of the color, was this available in 57, this color? Yes, this is called Cardinal Red. It's been available with various names since 1936. I think the last time they used it was 63. Um, I believe it was something like uh, Swift's Red Once Upon a Time or, or something like that. But this is a correct color. Um, it's not the original color of the vehicle, but it is a correct color for 57 Chevy Suburban. For a 57, it's not a pickup, of course, uh, a Suburban, but it's, it was designed as a utilitarian vehicle, but it's got a lot of pizzazz to it. Uh, do you think that was intentional at the time? I mean, this, this is that typical, you know, uh, you use it for a work vehicle all week and then drive it to, out to dinner on Saturday night. Do you think that was what Chevrolet was thinking? No, I don't. I think that Chevrolet was thinking primarily utilitarian because most of these came with the painted bumpers, painted grills, six-cylinder engine, uh, stuff like that. I've talked to a lot of people who uh, rode them up into the mountains uh, to go to work, uh, to the mine. A lot of them were uh, used by surveyors, and the military even, even used some of them, too. So, no, I do think it was uh, more for utility than it was for pizzazz. I, I think of the U.S. Forest Service. I remember these being uh, green and, and utilized by them. You're also correct on that. I've seen several of them. Unfortunately, they were all in junkyards, but I know exactly what you're talking about. What's the powertrain on this? This particular one is a 265 V8 with a four-speed granny low transmission and a 390 rear end. The uh, 283 wasn't available until you got into the, to the one-ton vehicles, so this would be a 265. It is the 283 block, but they only boarded out to three and three quarters instead of three, seven, three and seven eighths. The most distinctive thing about the style on these, other than the, the overall, it's a uh, suburban design, uh, I think are the wind splits, which I think are great on the hood, and then the, the massive bumper grill assembly. It just, it, it's, it's kind of, a, it's like a, a, a boxer in a tuxedo. It's sort of classy and tough at the same time. The wind splits, as you call them, are actually dealer installed accessories. Those particular ones are brand new, at least they were when I put them on, and they were to sort of stay with the theme of the wind splits on the 57 cars. The grill and the bumpers are chrome plated. Um, that's an option. I believe it's RPO 393. It's called the chrome option. Um, normally, uh, without spending the extra money, you got uh, painted bumpers, painted grills, even the painted bumper guards, and uh, again, without spending the extra money, you wouldn't get any wind splits at all. It's absolutely beautiful, so thank you very much for being on the Vintage Vehicle Show.